Okay, so we're looking at the um, exam style practice paper from the first year textbook. And we're on question 14, eventually. Okay, so we're looking at question 14, which I think involves some calculus. Okay, yeah, so you've got to read this one really carefully because if you just glance at it, it might look like it was just telling you to rewrite this, but actually they've given you f dash x and asked you to find f of x. Obviously that, that explains why there's a plus c on the end, because if you're going from f dash x to f of x, well, this means the differential of f and f, uh, sorry, this means the differential of f of x. So we're gonna integrate that to get back to f of x. Okay, so let's just get so in question 40. So f dash x, is root x minus x squared minus one over x squared. Okay, right. So the reason this is um, quite a challenging question is, is because of the simplifying, okay? So before I can attempt to um, integrate that, I need to cancel all these terms down. You can't just integrate the numerator and denominator of a fraction separately. So you may find it helpful to just split it up into three separate fractions don't have to do that but basically the three terms in the numerator all need to be cancelled through by x squared so um, root x is x to the power of a half and if i'm dividing i'm just subtracting the powers so a power of a half minus a power of two is um, a power of minus one and a half or minus three over two x squared over x squared just cancels to 1, and 1 over x squared we rewrite as a negative power. Okay, so that's what I want to integrate. Okay, and it's much better. I mean, if you, if you try to simplify the powers and you just made a slip, I think that first term is probably the trickiest one. That is so much better than just trying to integrate this as it is, because that if you just try and integrate this without simplifying it first, you're not going to get anything. If you do simplify the powers and you do make a slip, you're still going to get most of the method marks um, for the bits that you do correctly. So it is vital that you don't just try and integrate the x squared and the numerator separately. All right, okay, so I think that's really the hardest bit because the, the actual integration and process of integration isn't so bad. So I'm going to increase that power by one. So minus three over two plus one is minus a half. I'm going to divide by that new power and dividing by a minus a half is, is just going to be the same as multiplying by minus two. Minus x is going to, sorry, minus one is going to integrate to minus x and I'm going to increase that power to one. I'm going to divide by negative one, so that's just going to make it a positive. And then I've got the plus c. Okay, so normally that would be job done. But for this question, they, um, yeah, and I think the reason they've done that is really quite mean. I think the reason they, they've told me to put it back as a fraction is they're trying to trip you up almost into just integrating that as it is, okay? So, so normally I wouldn't bother rewriting it. That, that would be fine for my final answer. Okay, but let's have a think. So let's start rewriting those powers, those negative powers back as fractions. So a power of minus a half, well the half is a square root and the minus means it's at the bottom of the fraction, um, and the one over x um, is, uh, sorry, the x to the minus one is one over x. Okay, and they want me to rewrite this as a fraction, as a single fraction, all over x. Oh sorry, and I forgot my plus c. Okay, so, so think about what do you need to be able to add fractions? They all need to have the same denominator. And I can see from the answer that I want to have a denominator of x, but actually that's what I would go for anyway. So how am I going to make this? Um, so we've got separate working over to the side. Okay, so maybe not such a bright colour. Right, okay. So how am I going to rewrite minus 2 over root x as a fraction over x. Well, really, that's just rationalizing the denominator, which is something that you've done. So if I multiply root x by root x, I get x. So that would be 
the numerator for that. So that first term I can rewrite as minus two root x all over x. And if I look back to what I'm aiming for, um, yeah, I think I'm going to be okay because although that says plus two root x over x for that term, there's a minus there. So I think we're going to be we're going to be all right. Um, okay, if I want to rewrite um, minus x as a fraction over x. So really all I'm doing here is, is finding equivalent fractions. So that will be minus x squared over x. And that is already over x and we're leaving the plus c separate. So that would be minus two root, two root x minus x squared plus one all over x and that would be it apart from that's not quite what they've got me they want me to write but we're fine so currently my numerator so let's compare what we've got so my numerator i've got the same three terms as them i've got the x squared i've got the two root x and i've got the one but my signs are completely opposite as in when they've got a negative i've got a positive but that's fine because they've taken minus one out as a factor of the whole thing. So if rather than have it in front of each individual terms, I take the minus one out as a common factor. And obviously we wouldn't put minus one, we just put minus. Um, and I'll also just shift the order. So I had minus x squared. I had minus, I had minus x squared. So when I've taken minus one out as a common factor, that's going to become x squared. My minus two root x is going to become plus two root x and plus one will become minus one. And we will do a quick final check, but I'm pretty sure we're there. Yeah, so that's what they wanted. So that was worth five marks. Um, yeah, and, and made much harder by the fact they, they asked for it in this particular form. Okay, and what else do they want? So find the value of c given that um, f of x passes through that point. Okay, so so that is, in fact, yeah, that's reminded me to just need to not the answer a bit and put f of x. So it goes through, so we're answering part b, and it goes through 3 minus 1. Okay. So if I use those values, so when I substitute minus one into that function, no, I just ignore me. I was going to say that can't work. I can't do the square root of minus one it's because that's not right. It's when I substitute three into that function. Right, try that again. So minus three squared plus two root three minus one all over three. And I must make sure that um, that minus is, is in front of the entire fraction, okay? So all I've done there is substitute um, x equals three into that, okay? And when x equals three, y should equal minus one. And I'm trying to figure out what plus c is. So, um, and they, they want it in a particular form. Yeah, so basically I can't just stick it into my calculator because it'll give it to me as a decimal. Okay, so let's tidy that up. So minus one is minus nine plus two root three um, minus one all over three. So if I then add that, so if I add that fraction to the left hand side, so it was a minus. So if I add it over, that will happen. Um, and then I just need to collect everything together. So I could either, um, so they did want it in terms of, yeah, so, so R is going to be three. So it, it's in terms of root three. Um, so I can either just cancel through by three or I could rewrite the minus one over the fraction over three. So I'm gonna cancel through by three. So nine over three, 2 root 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3 is C. So if I collect those three um, rational numbers together, so minus 1 plus 3 minus a third, I get 5 root 3 plus 
sorry, I don't get five root three, I get five thirds plus two thirds root three. And we just check back, I think, get out of the way. Um, so they wanted it, yep, yeah, so it just said PQ and R rational numbers, so no mention of integers, so that's absolutely fine that we've got um, fractions. Okay, so let's just double check that though against their answer. Yep, yeah, so five thirds and two thirds and root three. 